I have excellent news, everyone. A ruling in my injury case went my way, and while it hasn't happened yet, and as far as I know, it will be half of what it used to be, I will start receiving injury compensation again. While this won't be something I can build a life on, it should hopefully mean that my worries about running out of money will end. For all my wonderful patrons, thank you so much for helping me weather through these rough times with your donations, but I felt it was imperative to let you know this. I never want to take advantage of you guys, and it's your money, and if you want to keep it now that I'm not at threat of starving, there are no hard feelings for me. I understand. Thank you again. I am eternally grateful. Though, maybe hold off ending your patronage until I actually start getting the checks. It'd be real foolish of me to make this message and then have the decision get appealed and overturned, and then just never have that money start showing up. So I'll keep it posted when I start receiving the checks. Again, thank you from the bottom of my heart. And if you aren't a patron, thank you for just being here. You guys are the best. Anyways, I think it's finally time to talk about the last figure Ryan from Twitter sent me. Thank you to Ryan. It's Beast Wars reissue Scorponok. This is a figure that based on what I've seen other people say about it, I think is kind of disliked. Not being considered all too impressive for the class it was back in the day. But I remember being a kid and loving the absolute hell out of this figure. So let's see if it holds up or if that's just rose tinted glasses. First up, starting in beast mode this time because I wanna. And it comes like that in the box anyways. Secondly, here's the box, and this is the first time I can't really critique it too much, because unlike the carded figures, I never really kept these rectangular boxes around. The box art is what I remember it being, with him having the medieval douchebag haircut, and I can say with confidence that I think that this is the first time I've actually agreed with the stats on the back of the box. Eighth strength seems a little high, but despite being a tinkerer in the show and seemingly something of a scientist, we were always told that he was an idiot, and he never did anything to prove himself too bright. So, five intelligence seems fair. Five speed may be a little too fast, though. He did seem like one of the slower ones from the show. And then 9 Firepower, yeah, those missiles he had were strong, and they wrecked the good guys more than a few times, so I think this is a fair assessment of his firepower. Lastly, there is one huge problem with this thing, in that it looks like the show. For those not in the know, the original Scorponok figure was black, pitch black. This, however, is the gunmetal of his show counterparts, and if there is one thing on the planet I hate, it's toy loyalty. Like, why would I want a figure that's not being fully updated just to be like an old toy? Unless that toy has a reissue, at which point it should be nothing but toy loyalty. I'm buying this thing not because it looks like the show, but because it's the same thing I had and loved as a kid. Why are you making it less like the thing it's selling itself on the merits of? If I'm buying this, it's because I want Toy Scorponok, not because I want Show Scorponok. So why are you sabotaging yourselves like this? Just don't change it and you win! But now that that gripe is out of the way, I have to say that this is a pretty awesome representation of the character from the show, actually winding up massively more accurate than the Kingdom version. This is quite possibly the most accurate of the original cast when looking at his beast mode, having the correct tail, head, and the mostly correct claws. It's all off-model, but it's still what it's supposed to look like, just run through a filter of old design capabilities. The hilarious thing about this figure is that while this is just a re-release of the original toy, it makes for a far better stand-in for the Scorpion mode than the Kingdom version. The Beast Mode head is great, looking passively like the one that he had in the show, which if you know early Beast Wars figures is actually quite an achievement. Now let's talk about the posability on this alt mode. I've removed the missiles from his right claw because they are on a hair trigger, and I've already almost hit myself in the eye with them once, so I don't need to be blinding myself while I'm trying to do this part. The head tilts up and down, already putting the Kingdom figure to shame I see. Arms rotate at the shoulder, and can get a 90 out, but weirdly enough, like only a 30 in, which is a problem I don't think any figure I've ever covered before has. Elbows pull a 90, elbow and wrist rotation, right lower claw opens, and the upper one kind of a bit, but that springs closed. And then his tail has several joints allowing it to swivel and do this sick automatic striking action you get by pushing on this lever. Unlike the Kingdom version, this easily gets past its own body and would be a useful attack. Unfortunately, mine's mismanufactured and it curves off to the side, just like my dick. Bug legs don't actually move, but at least he sits flat on the ground. So I'd say that the posability on this 25-year-old toy easily rivals the Modern Kingdom one, and nothing wants to fall off on him. Kind of. Nothing that shouldn't fall off him wants to, at least. And I'd honestly give this thing the edge in posing because of the way better tail. This thing comes with three total accessories. His two missiles stored in his one hand that fire simultaneously anytime you squeeze the claw, or look at it funny. These have some real power. You know, it's kind of interesting. You never see these anymore, so I never get to cover spring-loaded missiles. What a sad world we live in. And then you've got his spring-loaded Cyberbee, and I remember loving the absolute hell out of this thing as a kid. I just enjoy the way it flips out, and I have tons of fond memories of me turning this back into the claw mode and reattaching it. This is a feature so cool, they had to build an entire episode around it, and they couldn't even settle for it being a mediocre episode. It had to be one of the most memorable of the first season. So it's safe to say that these are some great accessories, and you just don't get stuff like this anymore. Transformation on this is fantastic, once again clowning on the Kingdom figure by being two and a half decades old, easier, more fun, more accurate, more clever, and leading to a more cohesive mode with less kibble. Honestly, this transformation is probably why I liked this thing so much as a kid. 
And seriously, everything about this mode is so tidy. Nothing is out of place, his legs aren't a catastrophe hanging off of his back, his build isn't goofy, and he's not square where he shouldn't be. I mean, this is far from perfect, his claws are way, way, way too big. Visible screw holes on his front, none of the sculpting is quite right, and he stands kind of funny. But seriously, you could use this exact same skeleton today, and just use modern techniques on the sculpting, and you would end up with an infinitely better one than the kingdom. I mean, just make the claws smaller, get rid of this screw here so the arms can get down more by his sides, and just touch up the sculpt and this could look like a masterpiece Scorponok. As it is, it still looks really good, just not entirely like the character. Though, enough like him. The worst thing about this is the old-style peg connections locking the torso into the back and head, as those are a little on the weak side. Also, the weird cone head is a strange decision. This is yet another figure from the first run of Beast Wars who had the mutant heads. And it's an odd choice to say the least. It's yet another instance where I'm not quite sure what they were going for. But then you can open this up, and I already want to put it back. To say that this is the head the show was based on might be a bit of an exaggeration. There are elements here that the show utilized, but the face in general is not quite right. God, what is with the horrible nightmare mouth? It haunts my dreams. And the visor is way too thin. I mean, this is what the toy looked like back in the day. It was just a mildly different color. But still, I think I preferred the mutant head on this, and I think you can see why. I just imagine it makes this noise all the time. On to posing, the mutant head has some tilt and rotation, whereas the regular head kind of doesn't. It's a lot more restricted. He has the exact same arms as before, but due to how the transformation works, the arms have swapped sides. Legs that are very slightly impeded going forward, but are heavily impeded out to the sides as they will cause the torso to untransform. Slightly less than 90 knees, feet that have some toe down and heel down, which was really good for the time, and a striking tail still works. So yeah, again, this is another Beast Wars figure that, for being 25 years old, is not as behind the times in terms of posing as you might think. A lot of that can be blamed on the Unicron trilogy making figures that were intentionally less complicated as one of their main goals, so they set figures back like a few decades. But still, this holds up impressively well, despite the limited range and a lot of the joints that honestly didn't need to have limited range. There is nothing in the design of this figure causing these shortfalls that absolutely had to be there. The closest thing is the screws in the armpits, and even that could have just not been there. All it would take to get this up to the modern standard would be to re-sculpt the areas where the joints are to add just a little more clearance, and then add a dedicated die swivel, which would have been really easy here. And also ankle tilts. And that's it. Seriously, Hasbro, why didn't you just update this figure to make Kingdom Scorponok? Even if you wanted it to look realistic, it would have been so easy to do that using this. And you had everything to gain from it. The transformation is better, being more fun and switching between more cohesive molds. Neither mode has kibble, which the Kingdom figure is rife with. The Kingdom figure has more posability, but not a lot, and that's a problem that very easily could have been remedied on this. I get that maybe you didn't want to deal with the spring-loaded tail gimmick, but you could have just as easily cut that out, and it would have still been a more functional set of joints. I just can't get over the fact that you paid someone to do a less fun version of a thing you already nailed decades ago. Seriously, if you want a Scorponok, yeah, this is a little clunky and weird by today's standards, and it's a bit big to fit your Kingdom line, but it's not horrible for that, and it's actually fun. I actually recommend you pick one of these up. I do not think you will be unhappy with your purchase. I loved the Beast Wars toys as a kid, but I still did not expect to be reviewing these and say, wow, these things hold up way better than you'd think, every time. I don't think this is biased, I think these are just good. And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And, if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.